Hey everybody, and welcome back to Frontend Expert. In this video, we will be talking about JavaScript frameworks. And more generally, we will be talking about frameworks and libraries. Now, you will oftentimes hear these two terms used interchangeably, but in fact, a framework and a library are two different things. So a library, first of all, is simply a collection of reusable code, usually in the form of functions, and these are what we call unopinionated. So the library does not care how you use the functions, it doesn't care where you use them, and the functions should essentially work anywhere in your code. A framework, on the other hand, is a provided structure for your code, and it is more opinionated than a library. A common way to think about this is based on a concept known as the inversion of control. Essentially what this means is that for a library, our code is going to call the library code. So when we need some utility function, we can call to a library to use their function. However, a framework is going to call our code. The framework is going to provide a structure for how the web page will work, and we will fill in the gaps. So for example, we will provide the implementation details of a single component, whereas the framework will control how that component is rendered on the page. Okay, so first I want to look at some utility libraries. Now a utility library is simply a library, so it's a set of functions or other pieces of reusable code, and these functions are fairly generic. They're just JavaScript functions that can help us with manipulating objects, arrays, etc. So the two major utility libraries out there are known as underscore and lodash. Underscore was the first of the two. It has over 100 utility functions. And like I said, it is useful for manipulating arrays, objects, functions, strings, and so on. And then Lodash is actually a fork of underscore. So many of the functions are very, very similar. Lodash's main purpose was simply to make underscore better. So they tried to create a more consistent API with functions that felt similar across different data structures, as well as they tried to make it more performant. And now the end result of this is that we now have both of these libraries. Some people prefer one over the other, but in reality, they are both good choices. And the decision of which one to use usually just comes down to which one has better functions for the needs of your application. And of course, you could also use functions from both of them in the same website. Next, let's look at jQuery. jQuery is a DOM manipulation library it also has functions for simplifying animations, event listeners, as well as Ajax. So essentially you can use their library instead of calling fetch. Now historically, jQuery has been the largest library on the web. And that's for good reason. It made JavaScript much easier to work with. That said, over time, many of the features of jQuery have been adopted by other libraries and frameworks, as well as some of them have just become a part of JavaScript. So as a result, jQuery has been getting less popular over time, but there's still a huge portion of the web using jQuery, and there's nothing wrong with using jQuery on modern applications, but many people do hold the opinion that there isn't much need for using jQuery on new projects anymore. Okay, so next, let's take a look at React. React is arguably the most popular library right now, and it is a declarative user interface library. So what this means is that we use React to build out user interfaces, and we use something known as JSX, or JavaScript XML syntax. And what this is, is it is essentially the ability to write HTML syntax inside of JavaScript. This allows us to use JavaScript functions and variables inside of our HTML, and we get this very declarative result where we can simply write out the output that we want so what we want the DOM to look like, and what variables we want to be used where, and React will handle the rest for us. Now you might be saying that that sounds more like a framework than a library, and it is definitely the most framework-esque of the libraries that we will look at, and I don't think it would be completely incorrect to refer to React as a framework, but they do refer to themselves as a library. One of the key distinctions here is that React is essentially a library for building out these reusable components. So it's essentially like we're creating our own HTML elements. And then React holds anything that it creates in what it calls the virtual DOM. So React itself is not actually adding any elements to the actual DOM. 
it is just keeping this virtual DOM, so a second version of the DOM, that is not actually being rendered by the browser yet. And then we use something known as React DOM on top of React, which takes the virtual DOM and combines it with the normal DOM, so the DOM that is actually visible to the user, and that's how we update the page. So at its core, you can think of React as simply a library that is providing functions that we can use to create these custom components. But it actually isn't super opinionated about the overall structure of our website. Okay, so next, let's take a look at some frameworks that do very similar things to what React is doing as a library. So first of all, let's take a look at something known as Angular. So Angular is a framework that was created by Google. So while React was created by Facebook, Google created Angular. And there's actually two primary versions of Angular. There's Angular JS as well as Angular, and they do have some differences, with Angular being the more recent version of it. It is a complete rewrite of the original Angular JS framework. So anyways, this is a framework that is used for developing web applications, and it uses reusable components very similar to the reusable components that we can create with React. However, instead of using the JSX syntax that React uses, in Angular, we use HTML templates. So we are writing actual HTML, essentially. And really, the biggest difference, aside from the syntax between Angular and React, is going to be that Angular is going to come with a collection of libraries and developer tools, and it really is a more full-fledged framework. So it is going to be a little bit more opinionated about how you write your code. Additionally, the newest version of Angular, so Angular, not Angular JS, is going to use TypeScript by default. But that said, that's not a huge difference with any of the other frameworks because most of them do support TypeScript, and usually you end up using TypeScript anyways. And then beyond that, the decision of which one to use will mostly come down to which one you prefer. Most people would agree that Angular can be a little bit harder to learn, but that said, it is very subjective and it comes down to personal opinion. And next we have Vue. So Vue is a progressive framework for building user interfaces once again. It also uses components, and this time it can either use HTML templates, which is the main way to work with Vue, or it also supports JSX. Additionally, it also uses a virtual DOM, very similar to the one used by React. Now, one really good component to Vue is that it is easy to add to a project, and you can use it incrementally. So the idea being that you can use it sort of like a library by adding just little features of Vue into your project, or you can adopt it as an entire framework, more similar to how Angular works. So as a result of this flexibility, as well as the fact that Vue is usually considered one of the easiest frameworks to learn, it has gotten extremely popular over recent years. Okay, so with that, we've seen a few different libraries and frameworks. And now the question is, how do we choose which one of these to use, or maybe to even use one of the other thousands of frameworks out there? Well, it does come down to personal preference, but there are going to be a few aspects of the framework or library to look at. Number one is going to be the learning curve. Some of the frameworks are going to be much harder to learn than others. And moreover, this can be different based on different people and what their experience levels are with different types of frameworks. But one thing to look at with the learning curve is going to be documentation. If the framework has really good documentation, it's going to be much easier to learn. And it will be easier to figure out your bugs when you can look at the documentation to make sure you are understanding the framework properly. And the next most important thing to look at is going to be the open source community. Now, I'm not just referring to the community that is building the framework, and to that community is, of course, very important. You need to make sure that they are actively supporting it. But what I'm referring to is the community around the framework. For example, with React and Angular, they have huge communities around them, so there are tons of packages that you can use to add on to both React and Angular. And oftentimes, it is these extra libraries on top of the main library or framework that can actually save you a ton of development time. And then finally, it's important to point out that you don't always need to use a framework. If you are creating a very substantial and large project, you probably want a framework or some libraries. However, if you are simply making, say, a portfolio website for yourself, you don't necessarily need to use a framework or a library for that. 
That's not to say that you can't use them, and of course you can, but for these simpler projects, oftentimes it is easier to just use vanilla HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And now finally, I do want to look at a few other tools that can help our JavaScript, but don't necessarily fall in the category of a framework or a library. So first we have Babel, and Babel is a JavaScript compiler for supporting new features on older browsers. So for example, if you use optional chaining, it will convert that optional chaining into a standard if check that older browsers would support. I like to think of Babel as like being the ultimate polyfill. So not only is it polyfilling some functions in, it is actually polyfilling the new features of the language. Next, we have Webpack, which is a JavaScript module bundler. And now there are other JavaScript module bundlers. For example, Rollup is one of the other popular ones. The idea here is that it will create a dependency graph of your JavaScript. So it is going to go through all of the different modules that you have used and to see what modules those modules import. And it can oftentimes merge this into a single JavaScript file, which will be much more efficient for pushing to production. And next we have TypeScript. Some people refer to TypeScript as a programming language. Others refer to it simply as a framework around JavaScript. But the idea of TypeScript is that it is a superset of JavaScript. And the difference is that it includes strong typing. So this simply allows us to include typing in our JavaScript, and it can help prevent a lot of bugs. And we will have an entire video on TypeScript in the crash course. And TypeScript is the largest strong typing superset of JavaScript, but there are some alternatives, the most notable being Flow.js, which works very similar to TypeScript. It just has slightly different syntax. And lastly, we also have Node.js, which is a backend JavaScript runtime environment. So we have looked at JavaScript on the front end as this is front end expert, but you can actually use JavaScript on the back end if you use Node to run the code. And of course, there are alternatives to Node as well, the most popular of which is called Dino, but Node is by far the most common backend JavaScript runtime environment at the time of recording this video. Okay, so with that, that's going to be the end of this video on JavaScript frameworks. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something new. I'll see you in the next one.